Hello and welcome. I'm Kevin Turner from Real Estate Uncut. Uh, good to be with you on our first broadcast for today. We've got another two coming up on Tuesday. Of course, we're coming to you live from the Ideas Exchange in Melbourne. And this is Live Exchange. And with me, Leanne Howard, who's been putting all this together. Leanne, congratulations. Thank you. We're just about to start. I think the first session starts in about a minute's time. Yes, we've got Chris Heller. He's the uh, president of Keller Williams Worldwide. Yes. Um, talking about global trends in real estate. They're the fastest growing real estate company in the world and the fastest, the, the biggest real estate company in the US, so he's got a lot of great information to share. Big program right through the day too, so uh, we'll be giving you all of that behind the scenes activity. We've got a number of people to talk to during the day. We've got uh, some live interviews for you, which I'll tell you about in just a moment, and we've got a number of pre-records as well um, as we come to you live from the Ideas Exchange in Melbourne. We're going to be talking in a moment to Manos Vindicakis from EVIEW, and he's going to tell us about how to protect commission in this environment and uh, also how to get more vendor paid advertising. Andrew McCann from Jealous Craig will also be with us in this half hour. Marcus Kiminello will be along as well, so too will Rob Sheehan. And also in this half hour, we'll be talking to Karen Vogel, Dane Atherton and Dr. Andrew Wilson. But coming up next, straight after the break, Gary Peer tells us how to build a world-class team as we come to you live from the Ideas Exchange. Gary, it's probably something maybe you and Philip don't think too often about, but is building a world-class team something you said about doing? It wasn't something we planned to do. Uh, we weren't quite that clever in our planning, but uh, it's something that's evolved. Uh, I mean, Philip and I were both good salesmen. We wanted to make sure that we had good salespeople with us who mirrored our, uh, our ethics, our determination, and the way we did business, and, and we've been able to achieve that, thankfully. Gary, my experience is that in the interview process, good salespeople are very good at selling themselves. How, how do you yeah. pick that attitude that you mentioned? I think positivity is very important. I think you can pick somebody that's positive. And look, we have some people that find it hard to be positive. And in fact, probably at the start of the year, Philip and I said to each other, look, the most important thing is for us to stay positive yes. because it's also yes. hard for us. You know, you look at your figures, you always want to beat your last February, your last December, your last March, and it's not possible to do that every year, year in, year out. But we have had a lot of years where we were able to do that. So the first thing is, as leaders, we have to be positive. And we have a high expectation. And you know, I guess some of the interviews, you talk about interviews, I mean, sometimes we'll meet with people six and seven times, and I'll try to scare them away, you know, because I don't How want- How do you do that? Uh, I guess I'll give them the expectation that we have, which is big. You know, expectation is big. And, you know, I expect a lot from myself, and Philip and I as partners expect a lot from each other. And, you know, we're, we're in business, it's demanding. So what does a world-class team expect of you as the owner of the business in terms of input into their business? Uh, I think they expect me to, to, to keep building them and helping them and, and guiding them through, through growth and through success. You know, I guess, um, you know, the characteristic of a winning person is someone who positions themselves to be able to get the best outcome for, them, for themselves and their client. Now, that would be my definition of a, a winning characteristic in, in an, an agent. Welcome back to the Ideas Exchange and uh, joining me for our first live interview and uh, this is quite a momentous occasion. Yes it is. Manos <laughs> Findikakis from EVIEW. Um, Manos has built a phenomenal business that's been centred around uh, building an environment for his salespeople that allows him to build a business within a business. Um, has got a tremendous track record of av- having run businesses since the age of 18. That would have only been a couple of years ago I think Manos. Yeah I'd it? like to think that. Yeah. <laughs> Manos really keen to talk to you about your business and how you've actually set it up to make sure that you're not reducing commissions in this environment. Yeah, well it is based uh, around making sure that our marketing is correct and our VPA and uh, look, when we started seven years ago, we were actually a no sale, no charge business. Wow, so you've done a complete turnaround. Total turnaround, two and a half years ago. Um, and since uh, since going 100% uh, vendor paid advertising and marketing and believing in in the marketing, our business has exploded. We've doubled our volume, we're selling over 100 uh, properties per month now. Um, the team's expanded as well, so it's been a total, total so, so change. So that, that change, has that come about because more of a belief in our product or? P- purely belief. I, I, it's, it's nothing to do with anything else except believing in the product itself. Um, and and I, I make that analogy like if I bring out a pen and I said to you, Kevin, Kevin, where would you expect to pay more for this pen? In David Jones or in Big W? Yeah, David Jones, of course. David Jones. So it's all marketing 
um, actually gives the perception of value and conveying that value to the vendor and saying, look, you need to market the property correctly. Where would you expect to pay more? And the buyers, when they come to your property, to make sure that you're using quality marketing so that it gives the perception of true value and exceeding um, market expectations for the property. Yeah, so that's marketing for the business and positioning yes. the business. Let's talk about vendor paid advertising for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, have you had a, a, a I mean, how important has vendor paid advertising been to you in the development of your business? Oh, it's, it's, it's paramount. Uh, without vendor paid uh, advertising, one, from a, from a business, the profit uh, margins obviously enormously increase. Mm. Um, we've seen a massive shift in our uh, margins in, in obviously in seven years and having that shift. Um, but purely from the agent's perspective as well, the branding that it enables the agent to, obviously you're doing the right thing by the vendor, getting it out to the marketplace and making sure you expose the, the property. Um, you're getting better results for your vendors and that in turn generates more business. So it's one flows, one effect flows on to the other. Sounds fantastic, but in, in a business environment, when you're working in a marketplace, you're gonna come across a lot of competition because yeah. you started a totally different model. Yes. How have you faced that competition and how did you get over that hurdle initially to start getting the vendor paid? Yeah, um, it, it's a great question, um, Kevin, and it really is mindset. Um, at the end of the day, discounting has been around since the dawn of time. So, so but so, that, that belief has to come from you, I suppose, doesn't it? Does. It does. Mean, it you... comes from leadership and it comes from actually believing in the product. So once you take that mind shift and once you start practicing and investigating and actually looking at the results, um, we use what we call our Sold Story um, program. Yep. Our Sold Story program is basically talking about all the properties that we sell within a month and we talk about days on market, um, uh, how many buyers went through internet inspections and marketing spend. So it's evidence based to the vendors. I see. Yeah. And that, uh, mark, that sold story tells the vendor that investing in marketing is actually going to give a result. So it's evidence based marketing yeah. to the vendors. Wonderful, Marcus. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Manos, thank you very He's much next. for joining us, mate. <laughs> He's coming up next. Uh, Marcus Kimadolo is Agnes, coming Kevin. along uh, shortly. Um, Andrew McCain um, from. Um, will be joining us too, and uh, can anyone succeed in real estate? Manos Findikakis, our first guest, as we come to you live from the Ideas Exchange in Melbourne. Thanks for having us. See the biggest lineup of successful real estate professionals, coaches, and mentors ever assembled with Domain's Insight to Success. Join Kevin Turner. In each episode, he goes one-on-one -on -one with some of Australia's top performers in the biggest video series produced exclusively for the real estate industry. Kevin's experienced perspective unveils powerful insights to help you understand how people are succeeding in the current marketplace. All yours, free, every week. Welcome back to the, uh, to the Ideas Exchange in Melbourne. My next guest is Andrew McCann from Jealous Craig. Uh, a bit of a history about Jealous Craig. In 2013, uh, Jealous Craig Benison McKinnon was formed through a strategic merger incorporating uh, the Jealous Craig and Benison McKinnon Enterprises in a co-branded business. Uh, it's a partnership that uh, actually combines over 50 years of collective experience. Uh, Andrew is the Managing Director of the Armadale Office and has been in real estate for almost 20 years. That's hence the loss of hair. Uh, yeah, thanks for pointing out the haircut, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. uh, almost 15, but... Um, oh, okay. We'll be, we'll be 20 in, in, in well, heartbeat, well, I'm sure. Give, give it a few so, more times. Give it a few, give more, a few, times more, few more years. Um, do, do you really believe that anyone can succeed in real estate? Look, I do. I, I think having been around for a little while now, you see a lot of people come and go in the real estate industry. But I think that the ones that stay and, and the ones that perform have got nothing necessarily special about their background. I think it's an industry that certainly welcomes all comers and all styles and types of personalities. I think it's a, it's a commitment question most of the time, more than anything. But I certainly so think it's an industry that people can succeed in. So is it that commitment, that lack of commitment, do you think that holds us back from, from achieving? I think it can be lots of things. It can be poor leadership, wrong employment style, um, you know, bad attitude towards systems. but. I think it's a commitment issue in relation to activities more than anything. The one thing that we talk about in our business regularly is a consistent pattern of activities done regularly. And if you look at the best agents that perform year in, year out, yep. they tend to be highly organised and very efficient. Do you think uh, that, that regular pattern of activity is a way to overcome the obstacles? Because there are a lot of obstacles, a lot of failure and rejection in real estate. 
You've got to have thick skin in real estate. I think that's certainly the case in your first few years. So we, we have a lot of new starters, and I talk about the fact earlier that you know people come and go in the industry. I think if you can be resilient enough to make it through those first two years where you do deal with some rejection, you deal with you know probably a few more no's than you will yeses, and you have to go out and work for the business that some others aren't chasing. Mm. I think once you can get past that, you certainly find that it's, a, it's an upward trend. But th that's the great challenge, is investing the time being prepared to be patient and being prepared to put in that, that work early on. Let's talk for a moment about coaches and mentors if we could. Um, have you got, personally, do you have a coach, a mentor? Oh, look, I have had in the past. Um, I've got a lot of mentors, I've got a lot of business partners, a lot of people that have helped me on my way through the industry. Um, I don't have a, a coach as such, but I certainly believe in that concept. Um, Michael Sheargold was a coach for me in a, in a selling role for three years. Um, I subscribe to, you know, Josh Fegan does a lot of work with our company. Uh, I meet and talk with him regularly and I'm always out looking at training opportunities. So I'm a big believer in that third party endorsement and assistance program. Uh, and I think that from a young person's or a young agent in terms of years in the industry, finding that person that can help you in terms of your path is really important. Someone watching this now, like maybe a young person just starting in the industry, has got a burning passion to actually really succeed in it. Yeah. Well, what are some of the steps they can put in place right now to, to make sure they move in that direction? Yeah, well, I think um, I heard a really terrific quote from Michael Sheargold many years ago, which was, you, know, you often overestimate what can be achieved in, in one year yes. and underestimate what can be achieved in three. So I think for anyone who's early into their career, having that long-term focus is the most important thing. And, and the word patience, as much as it's a challenging word to administer into your day-to-day -day program, give me patience around your, your time. Um, the activities that are the most important in my mind is getting consistency around your, your week and your day and the way that you utilise time. And then over and above that, the, the programs that you have in terms of picking up the phone and, and ringing people, looking to make connections and looking to get to know people. So they're, they're some of the, the basic steps that you can, you can do to turn your business around quickly? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I want to thank you for, for being here. A great environment here at the Ideas Exchange. It's going to be a terrific day. Thanks it's, very it's much for having me along. It's going to be a tremendous day, yeah. So uh, thanks very much for joining us, Andrew. No worries. I've been with um, uh, Andrew McCann from Jealous Craig. Um, coming up shortly, Dr. Andrew Wilson. We've got a real challenge for him because we've asked him from Australian Property Monitors to give us a snapshot on the Australian market. And the reason I think that's important is because it's always great to know what you can be telling buyers and sellers about the current market stat. So we'll just see how Dr Andrew Wilson goes with giving us a two minute snapshot on the national market. I'm Kevin Turner from Real Estate Uncut and with the compliments of course of a Visual Domain, uh, Domain themselves and the Real Estate Project, we're coming to you live from the Ideas Exchange in Melbourne. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome to Real Estate Uncut. The free daily podcast for real estate professionals featuring top performing agents, mentors, coaches and great leaders hosted by Australia's leading independent property commentator, Kevin Turner. You can listen on your laptop or on the go with any mobile device or through iTunes. Sign up at the website, it's free and discover how Real Estate Uncut can improve your success today. Joining me, Dr. Andrew Wilson from Australian Property Monitors. And uh, Andrew, we've got a mission for you. Oh, really? Two Another minutes. one? Yeah. <laughs> Two minutes, I want you to give us a snapshot on the market. What can we be telling buyers and sellers about the state of the current market? Well, look, we've had a great finish to the year last year, Kevin, and I think most of the industry recognise that. We had that uh, release of all that pent up demand with that incredible surge in affordability with those interest rate falls we had in May and August. So we did see some big numbers and a lot of activity and a lot of confidence and enthusiasm in just about all capital city markets. Uh, I think we're now starting to see a moderation of that. And look, no surprise, we've seen the best prices growth, particularly in Sydney for a decade, and the best prices growth in other markets for four years. So Sydney's really been leading the march, hasn't it? I mean, it's, do, you, do you see that slowing down at all? Well, it has started to slow down, Kevin. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we had a 5% growth rate in Sydney over the December quarter. That's tracked back to 3% still strong but look we've got to keep that income versus prices growth uh, model uh, in track in, in sync and I think that we've seen prices in some of those mid-range price suburbs in Sydney up in North Shore and the inner west just get a little bit ahead of price of incomes growth and we're just seeing a moderation as those affordability barriers kick in. So give, give me some some words that an agent can use now when they're facing a seller 
who says, oh, well, the market's going at such a great pace, you know, um, you know, you know why, well, I don't think I'll just sit back and wait and see, you know, when I get that first offer. Well, I think that, look, it all, most buyers are sellers and sellers are buyers in a market. And the important focus is to remain within the market dynamics or within what the cycle's doing at this period. I think we are seeing a moderating effect in prices growth, but what we will see is the local factors determining how the market operates. And markets are certainly reflecting local economic activity. Sydney's very strong at the moment in terms of its economy, Melbourne not so strong. So uh, I think it's about those local factors at the moment. Watch how the economics is driving housing markets and those sub-markets. But we're going to see a better winter this year, generally in prestige property markets. I think we're, because we've just seen last in, last out in terms of that prestige market and it's uh, got a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of energy at the moment, reflecting I guess what's happening in the stock market. What's happening with first home buyers? Well look, that's a mixed story as well. We've had a lot of disruptions to burst home buyer activity over the last couple of years. Changes to those grants have brought forward demand, but markets such as uh, Adelaide and Perth still have very strong first home buyer activity. But first home buyers of course are looking at all these strong price rises and I guess they're pulling their hair out. When you really look at the first home buyer market though, it does actually uh, make up such a small part of the market. I mean, you've got to look more at the investor market. Yeah, and the first home buyer market doesn't tend to be driven by the same cyclical dynamics that drive other markets. They come into the market regardless of the nature of interest rates or the nature of the economy. And that reflects that very strong underlying aspirations that Australians have for home ownership. You've done a fantastic job, Andrew. I'm, Thank I'm you. I'm just so pleased to be speaking to you, Kevin. You are the guru. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Andrew Wilson's been my guest from Australian Property Monitors. And look, he did it. He gave us a great insight into the market in only a couple of minutes. Stay with us because in just a moment, Marcus Kimonello from Marshall White will join us. How quickly can you turn a business around? We're coming to you live from the Ideas Exchange in Melbourne. See the biggest lineup of successful real estate professionals, coaches and mentors ever assembled with Domain's Insight to Success. As a licensed estate agent with over 25 years of industry experience, Kevin knows exactly what questions to ask to uncover the secrets to success. Everything you need to know to join the ranks of successful operators. All yours, free, every week. Welcome back to the Ideas Exchange. We're coming to you live. This is Live Exchange. We're streaming live from Melbourne and it's great to have you along too. We've got uh, people watching us from all over Australia and we've just heard that uh, quite a number also from New Zealand and America. So it's great to have you on board and uh, thanks for being with us. My next guest, no stranger to the Real Estate Uncut um, audience, is Marcus Kimonello from Marshall White. Uh, from a rising star in 2014, has now uh, became a company director in 2010 is recognised as one of the industry's leading talents, not only at Marshall White, but Australia-wide. He's what I call amongst the new breed of agents, uh, Marshall White's Agent of the Year in 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013? Uh, no, I think I've been disqualified now. For Have a you? Participating they've, 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 again. Ven <laughs> they've venged you out. Oh, uh, Mark, uh, Marcus, I want to talk to you about turning your business around. Um, yep. How do you do it and how quickly can you do it yep. if, you, if you're unsatisfied? Yep. Very, very good question. Um, the speed of how it happens it all depended on what you want to happen. So I think first and foremost, someone has to look at what type of business they actually want to be, um, what type of real estate agent they want to become, uh, and work backwards from that. So they first need to identify that. So first they go, well, do I want to be a specialist in a particular marketplace? Do I want to be everything to everyone? then how do I go about doing it? Look, that, that could be a one-week turnaround in their own mind, but not necessarily in the market's view. Mm. But typically, I think you would need to allow a six to 12 month transition from mm. making the decision, identifying who you want to be, and then starting to work your plan backwards from what you want to be. Is that what you've done? Do you, do you do that on a reasonably regular basis? Or? Without doubt, without doubt. And that's probably the catalyst in my movement in, uh, and change in my career from some seven years ago was I felt like I was everything to everyone and I really wanted to identify uh, who I wanted to be and yes. recognise in the marketplace. Yep. Uh, and at that point, that's where I started to make the transitions and the necessary steps to ultimately yeah. turn into an agent that I was recognised for achieving something in the market. 
Let's go back the last 12 months. What are some of the key things that you've done to improve your income, say, in the last year? Yep. Um, what I've actually done is, I've, A, I've employed another person into my team to create a little bit more leverage. Um, more importantly though, I always look at my database. I look at cleansing my database and working with more people that I want to work with and they're going to be great advocates for me out in the marketplace, which I call my VIPs, my marketing team. So I've really honed in on that even more so and broaden that team because I see those people as actual, um, look at my call it uh, like my public relations team out of the market. So those AAA VIP clients are out there talking about me positively when necessarily they might be at a dinner, dinner uh, table, dinner party, at a function, they're promoting me out in the market. So I'm really honing in on working on them, um, getting me more business. So how big is your database? At the moment, it's just a little over 700 people. So I don't, I don't sit there with thousands of people. So when you cleansed it, yep. what was it before you did that? Or, or did you keep them that there? That was a refinement. Refined. Around 700 is, is about my threshold, yes. ceiling in terms of uh, database numbers. Uh, at one point when I had the career change, I went from in excess of 700 down to below 400, to about 390. Wow. So it's a very, it's a very big, big cleansing yeah. process. And do you segregate them then and look at you know A class, B class, C class? I, is that I, how you do I, it? Really simplistic. I have VIPs, I have my buyer sellers, I have my client nurture yeah. and then I have everyone else. Yeah. Mark, it's great talking to you and uh, great Likewise. to have you along on, Thanks, on Live Exchange. First time we've ever done this, it's quite exciting. And Absolutely, and yeah, it's, it's great. It's, it's great good content. Have. Good on Very you. Good. Thank Thanks, you. Kevin. Marcus Kimonello from Marshall White has been my guest. Karen Vogel um, is uh, from Hocking Stewart, prospecting as a team. And I want you to watch this because this is actually quite unique. We'll be back in just a moment. Prospecting, of course, is the backbone of every real estate office. You do team prospecting in your office. How does that work? The sales office actually does that for the sales guys. So there's a team that we've created to make sure that our prospecting is kept up to scratch because, as we know, most salespeople don't like prospecting. So mm. we thought that we, we to make sure that it was done consistently, because consistency is the key, that we would need to do it ourselves. So do the salespeople have a say in how it's done? Oh yes, of course. Um, they may say, say for example, Naomi from my office has a great result um, down in Glen Park Drive. She'll go to, the, to the, um, the business development team and say, guys, can you let her drop the street um, and then ring through the street. But is there an overall office plan as well for your prospecting? Yeah, the company plan is it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's pretty simple really. It's, we, we concentrate a lot on results. Um, so just sole prospecting we find is where we're getting the, the, the best results. So the first thing that we like to do is just sole prospecting to our database. So those people who are at, like in an incubation period. So how big is that prospecting or the mm. business development team? We have had as, as many as four in the team, but actually found that was too many. Mm. There was too, too, too many opportunities being created for the sales team. It's amazing. I know, <laughs> it is amazing. It, 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 it can actually work. Um, so we found the optimum level is two. In the business development team, how are those team members rewarded? They're paid, obviously they get paid a salary. They get paid for each listing, everything that, that gets comes on. Uh, not necessarily wait till it's sold. We actually pay on listing. And welcome back to the Ideas Exchange. This is the live exchange and we're staying with you for uh, a little bit longer. After uh, our next live chat, uh, stay with us because we've got a couple of really good episodes for you to, to, uh, to listen in for the morning. We're going to be back at, uh, um, uh, at about 12.45. We'll tell you more about that in just a moment. My next guest is Rob Sheehan from Fletcher's. He is the director of the company. 30, you said? 30, just turned 30. Just turned 30 years old. Um, has been in the industry for about eight years and is also a director of the company. So, you know, great achievements for such a young guy. You. I'm really keen to talk to you because you, you obviously operate a very successful office and a great team. Why is it that you can walk into an office and see some people performing at a great level and others really struggling? Yeah, it's a really interesting question. When you have a look at uh, the guys who are all doing well, there's a common characteristic. They simply go to work on their business whereas you find a lot of the guys who are just caught up day to day are working uh, in the business and just caught but up. But how do you get to that stage? I mean, that's, it's not something you can do quickly. Absolutely. Well, there's three key things that those guys all, all seem to do as, as you study them. 
the first thing is they build a team around them. They've got a team of guys who can help them out. The second thing is they've got- These are like PAs, you mean, advisor senior, agents? Yeah, and... assistants, people who can help free up their time. The second thing is they've got great systems in place. You know, there's a system for everything that these guys do. And I think the third thing is they just understand that to get the maximum out of each day, they need to be doing dollar productive activities. And it's really simple, they, they prospect, list, sell, negotiate, and, and that's what they do and their team seem to take care of the rest. The vast number of agents around Australia, though, don't have the luxury of having people work with them. You know, and, and I guess this is the, the, the area that we're moving into, is this area of building a business within a business. Yep. Someone just starting out or someone wanting to get to that level, what stage can you actually start to put on a, your first PA? Yeah, well, uh, you ask anyone who's really successful and down the line, they'll say, when you're uncomfortable doing it is probably when you need to do it. I think, Kevin, you reach a point in your career when you know you're not doing the things you need to do to get to where you want to go. That's the time when you need to take a, a leap of faith and bring someone on. You hinted at it at the start there when I asked that question about you know how some people achieve well and others don't, uh, is that the really good people seem to be able to focus on just some really good core activities because it's very easy to get distracted in real estate, isn't it? It's incredibly easy when you look at how many things there are day to day and even working within an office. But you know, you look at all those guys who do really well, they know where they want to go and they've got a plan and they just make it happen day in, day out. What's, I asked Marcus Kimonello this question, yeah. I'll ask you too. Uh, what is it you've done in the last 12 months to really accelerate the income into your business? Yeah, I made a decision, well, I was actually going back about 18 months ago, where day in, day out, I was no longer going to accept just doing okay. And sometimes that means working a little bit harder, uh, working a little bit longer to make it happen. And it's just an internal decision. Uh, I've brought on a team, I've got two assistants working for me now, and those assistants have freed up my time. And the final thing, Kevin, is I've tracked my time um, uh, with Dr. Fred Gross, and each each hour is accounted for in my schedule, and that's made a massive difference down the track. You've probably seen it too, and I'm certainly seeing it in you, Rob. Is there's an uh, in really good people? There's an uneasiness. There's a there's a uh, I'm not going to accept this. I really want to push for more. Is that something that that you can learn, or yeah, I think there's only two pre prerequisites to being successful in real estate: hunger and attitude. Uh, and if you're hungry, you're going to do whatever it takes to get there. And if you've got the right attitude, you'll deal with whatever comes up. It's a tough job. You know, it's very simple, but it's a very challenging job. And if you've got the right attitude, you can see guys in their early to mid 20s earning phenomenal money, you know, just by doing some simple things right. Yeah. So let's look at the next 12 months. What are some of the things that you're going to put in place to keep your business growing? Yeah, well, um, I've actually got an assistant who's working with me now. My goal is to turn him into a gun agent by the time he's in his mid 20s. So my focus is going there. And so you, you're changing, aren't you? You're changing into building people. Yeah, well, that's um, my, my job has changed from just being a salesperson day to day selling real estate to now building a team of performers. And you know, I've, I've got a, 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 an internal goal to you know, build a team of guys who are successful in the future based off all the great things I've learned from, from people in the industry. I've been very lucky from some great mentors and you know, hopefully I can pass some things on as well. Is that, does it come down to that, does it, the people you work with? So I guess where you work in an office is pretty important, isn't it? It's uh, not important, it's crucial. You know, you can be the right person in the wrong office and not have a successful career. Yeah. Rob, it's great talking to you. Welcome to uh, the Ideas Exchange and uh, thanks for spending some time with us today. Pleasure, Kevin. Thank Good. you. My guest has been Rob Sheehan, who is the director of uh, Fletcher's. And we will be back live in just a moment. Capture the hearts and minds of an unlimited audience with online video. It's the ultimate open for inspection. Visual Domain has produced over 20,000 property videos, leading the way in real estate marketing. Showcase your property to a global audience. Join the digital revolution. And we're back live at the Ideas Exchange in Melbourne. Of course, Ideas Exchange on here all day today. And uh, then we travel to Sydney on Tuesday. We'll be back with you then for another breakfast show. We're going to come back later in the day too at 12.45 today. And we've got another lineup of great guests for you. Stay with us though, because we've got a couple of exciting episodes that I want to 
uh, tell you about from Insights to Success. Dane Atherton uh, will be talking about his formula for success and Tim Heaviside, another great uh, performer out of Melbourne, getting more vendor paid advertising. I want to thank our guests that have been with us in this segment, John Cunningham, uh, Darren Saunderson, Gary Peer, Manos Findikakis, of course, from EVU, Andrew McCann, Dr. Andrew Wilson, Marcus Kimonello, Karen Vogel and Rob Sheehan. I'm Kevin Turner on behalf of all of the team here. Thank you very much for being with us and we look forward to catching up with you. Come back and join us again at 12.45 today and we'll give you our lunchtime segment with a whole lot of new guests. In the meantime, enjoy these two episodes from Insights to Success. I want to thank our sponsors, of course, Domain, Visual Domain and The Real Estate Project. I'm Kevin Turner from Real Estate Uncut. We'll be back again at lunchtime. We'll see you then.